Hello, my name is Molly Yanis, and I am the founder and solution architect behind Straline, a strategic alignment and goal tracking platform. If you feel like there's so many ideas and so many projects and priorities are constantly shifting in your organization, maybe you're, you don't have a great idea management program where people can submit new ideas and actually get responses. Um, maybe you're looking for more insight from your team on how those ideas would impact your strategic goals. And maybe you're just looking for a system that'll help you prioritize all of these amazing initiatives you have going on. Um, we are, I, I actually founded Echo Consulting, which is a, a consultancy focused on work management. So how does work get identified? How does it get prioritized? How does it get implemented? We do a lot of implementations of work management software like Smartsheet or Monday or, or Microsoft Planner and all those other ones. Um, but what we kept running into was teams that were struggling with prioritizing. All of these new projects came in and where do these fit along with all of the existing projects that are already in play? And they would have input from their senior leadership, executive leadership team on their overarching goals, but they just kind of were on a slide somewhere or a sheet somewhere. It didn't really play into their day-to-day -day making decisions across all of these different potential things. So many team members I've spoken with, they have full-time operational jobs and they're trying to do these process improvement projects. And what really is going to move the needle for the organization? And that is why we developed Straline. So again, Straline, a strategic alignment platform. And today I'm just going to do a quick overview of some of the really cool functionality that maybe you don't have today. Maybe you're doing it in Excel or maybe you just always thought that this didn't exist and now it does. So anyways, um, if we think about an organization, hopefully you have some visibility from your leadership on what the goals are. And so typical goals that we might hear talk about, you know, revenue targets or cost management, save, cost savings targets, or maybe you're trying to find the right people in your organization or you're struggling with, you know, upselling clients or looking to get additional traction with your brand or, or website or something like that, right? There's all sorts of different goals. With Straline, you can make those goals and your vision available and, um, you know, put it out to the world, put it out to all your team members. Hey, these are the different goals we have. And not only are we setting goals, but we're kind of weighting those goals because different, not all goals are are created equally, right? So some goals are are higher priority right now than other goals. The power of Straline is that you have their goals, but you also have the ability to add ideas and to look at how ideas and projects and opportunities change in priority over time. So if I'm looking at my homepage, I'm seeing that I've submitted six ideas. Two of my ideas have gotten traction and they've been moved to be an opportunity. So they're getting more analysis. Maybe an analyst is kind of digging in and trying to figure out the complexity and the ROI and all that other things. One of my ideas made it to a project. So it was funded, it was approved, it's actually being worked on right now. And then I have actually completed 91 comparisons and I've given some ratings. So what do I mean comparisons? Well, humans are pretty bad at looking at a list of 10 projects or 20 projects or 100 projects and putting them in order of priority. But do you know what humans are actually pretty good at? Humans are pretty good at saying, hey, is this project or this project going to do a better job at reducing customer churn? And so I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to have, and again, these projects are fake as a demo, right? But like, okay, is this knowledge user or is this user-centric thing going to uh, uh, reduce customer churn? Oh, well, you know what? The user-centric one is going to. Oh, hey, you know what? User-centric. So I'm actually comparing this project versus this project and saying, which one of these is going to do a better job at reducing customer churn, which is my goal, right? So this is one thing I can do, right? I can compare and say, huh, inverse protocol or user-centric for customer churn. You know what? User-centric. But here's a different goal, and this goal is about the client life cycle. Is it going to be this diverse generation, et cetera, or user-centric? You know what? 
this idea is going to be better for the client life cycle. And this is going to be better for the client life cycle. You know what? I don't really know this one. I'm going to go ahead and skip and I'm going to look for something new, right? And I'm comparing this idea, this project, this goal, this idea, this project against this goal. So that's one way I can provide my unique input on how different ideas may impact the goals that the organization is looking for. And so, hey, kudos for me. I completed eight comparisons. And if I go back to my home screen, I can see, wow, you know what? I went from 91 comparisons. I provided 99 comparisons between this idea and this idea and this project and this project to see which one I think is going to better impact the goal. I've also done things called ratings. Well, what's a rating, right? If I want to rate a project, anyone ever heard of like a Likert scale, right? So I have a list of these projects. So I can say, you know what? I know a lot about the internet, right? So I'm going to go ahead and rate this internet project or this idea. And for this uh, intranet, is it going to grow shareholder value? Meh, I don't think it's going to have a major impact. It's not going to have a negative impact on it, but it's not really going to have a positive impact. So I'm going to kind of do that. Brand awareness, meh, doesn't really have any impact. I'm going to leave that here. I'm going to go ahead. Is it going to diversify revenue streams? Nope, not going to do anything for that. Is it going to improve client experience? Yes, because all of my templates will be in one place. So yes, it's going to have a positive impact, but you know, not all the way and not extreme, just a positive impact to make it a little bit easier. Is it going to help us diversify our strength? Yes, because our internet is our knowledge management program and everything like that. Is it going to increase website traffic? Meh, probably not. Breaking into new markets, it'll help a little bit, but not too much there. Um, is it going to reduce customer churn? Oh, yeah. It's going to help us majorly on that piece. Is it going to increase revenue? Yeah, we're going to be a little bit more efficient for it. I think it'll improve that. And the client life cycle actually following up after an implementation? Absolutely. So you know what? I'm going to say that's going to have a really positive impact, right? So um, I go back and I provided that rating. But why am I doing this comparison and this rating as a team member? Like, why am I doing that? So I know that I can go ahead and add an idea, right? And when I add an idea, you know what? I'm going to say, hey, I really think that we need a community service day, right? Um, service day. And um, let's say, say we all do a <clears throat> team building, community building um activity. Um, good for PR plus marketing opportunity. Um, good for morale. I can't spell things like that. You know what? Um, I think this idea, like primarily, I think we're going to focus on that from like kind of customer relations and satisfaction and probably marketing and branding. So those are kind of the two departments that I think are going to be kind of most focused on this, right? Um, is it co complex? No, I don't think it's actually that complex to do this. So I'm going to say it's low complexity. And then over here on the right, what are these related items? Oh, okay. These are projects that maybe have to do with a community service day. Do I look through here? Do I already see a community service day? You know what? Nope. I don't have anything that really is going to be there. Um, maybe I say, you know what? I actually think that reactive local service deck, you know, what? I'm going to link this opportunity. I think that they're related. So anyways, I'm submitting this new idea. I'm submitting my idea. It's all great. Now that idea is going to show up on my list, but for right now, it's not really ranked quite yet, right? Because um, we have lots of different projects and things like that. So anyways, that's what I'm doing as a user. So I can see, hey, what are our goals? What are the current top priorities for projects? Um, have there been any major changes since I last logged in? And I can rank and compare. That's, you know, it's good. I can put my ideas in. I know where my ideas stand and I can see where my goals are. And the way that I upvote my idea is by doing comparisons and things like that. So that's one perspective. Now I'm going to put on my leadership hat, right? I'm a leader. And I have all of these amazing ideas that my team members are putting in, and I'm trying to figure out how to actually say, you know what, these are the ones that we're putting our dollars towards. These are the ones that we're going to focus on right now. And so as a leader, not only do I want to make sure that I'm setting the goals correctly, but I want to do something that we like to call scenario planning. So in scenario planning, I have a default scenario and I am including kind of which goals are in this scenario 
and I'm including kind of how those goals are weighted. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna just edit my goals really quickly. This is my default scenario. We can say like um, uh, current scenario, let's just na rename it, right? And I have the different goals that I have in here. And maybe I want to get rid of, I don't know, diversify strengths. That's not that exciting. Um, and I want to increase my focus on increasing revenue. So let me go ahead and update that to 20, right? And so I'm going to go ahead and save this. I've updated my default scenario, current scenario. I now have nine goals. I also have other scenarios, right? So I have created a scenario that is revenue focused. And what does that mean? It means that I've come in here, I've created a scenario, I've adjusted what goals are included in the scenario, and I've weighted them differently. And so when I go to scenario planning, I'm expecting to look at kind of what my default scenario is and what the priorities are based on my default scenario. And I want to compare it to if I really focused on revenue, um, what would that look like, right? And I would see that some of these projects would not be included if I was focusing on revenue instead. So instead, let me click on the position for revenue. These would be the top projects if I was focused on this revenue scenario. Now let's look at another scenario that I created that is more customer focused, right? So now I have my default scenario, my scenario that like is the current state of how the projects are prioritized and things like that. And then I'm looking at a scenario that is more customer focused, right? So let me go here and say, okay, if I was focusing, you know, purely on customers and the goals are aligned to like being customer focused, these would be my top projects, right? I can also do things like filter. So maybe I don't really wanna look at ideas right now. I just wanna look at opportunities and projects. Or maybe I really wanna only focus on something that is in customer relations, for example. So I have other ways to kind of filter down and apply and see how that would look like from that priority. So in this case, I'm looking at only the ones that are coming that are opportunities and projects. So I'm excluding things that are ideas that probably just came in, haven't gotten enough traction yet. And I'm only looking at customer relations and satisfaction projects, right? Or maybe I'm looking at customer satisfaction and marketing and branding. So with this scenario planning, I can see what my top projects would be if I was customer focused versus if I was uh, revenue focused, right? And I would see how that priority would change based on right the different rankings. Um, so I love this functionality. As a user, I love spending time in those kind of steer code meetings, those executive meetings, those leadership meetings, and thinking about one, do we have our goals correctly? Are we weighting those goals? So some of the things that we've talked about with our clients is like, hey, we were really focused on revenue generation, but we just landed this incredible three-year contract with a major client, and now we really need to beef up our operations. We need to beef up our uh, customer service. Awesome. You still have goals of revenue generation, but maybe it's not as high a priority right now as some of that customer operational efficiency stuff. Hey, what's going on in the um, in the macro economy right now like we really want to focus on cost cutting because we know that we're, you know everything is suppressed and we don't have access to the cash flow that we used to great okay so let's look at a scenario that is really focused on that so a couple of different ways i can do that right i can just duplicate an existing one so like hey this is revenue focused i think i'm just going to duplicate the scenario right and then I'm going to go ahead and edit it. And I'm going to say, okay, so this is going to be kind of F2. This is going to be, um, you know, cost um, efficiency. All right. And I'm going to add another owner here. And I really want um, Jill from the accounting department in here. I'm going to make sure that this is shared so everyone can see the scenario. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and maybe I'm going to add a couple more goals because I really want to, you know, break into new markets, I guess. Right. Um, and so increasing revenue. Absolutely. But reducing churn is actually going to become more important. Right. Um, as well as. Um, you know, maybe we are a little bit less focused on diversification right now. We're just focusing kind of on our core functionality and we're going to increase this. 
and um, breaking into markets and revenue streams about the same. So I'm going to do that. And like, really, it's going to be focusing on. So anyways, as a strategic leadership team, I'm coming here. I'm looking at our goals. Are our goals still aligned? And are these things that we're tracking, right, and getting input from the team really aligned with what we need to focus on? And maybe you don't have the right goals in play here and you need to have another goal added so that people can provide input on that. So this is a new scenario. I created this scenario. It's called, you know, Q2 cost efficiency. Um, but I can also go and say, you know what, I want to add another goal that I wasn't focused on before. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a goal because I have the ability to do that. Only leaders and admins have access. So if you're a team member in the system, you can't add a new goal. Um, but basically, like... Um, reduced costs is a good example. Um, and if you're looking for help with like some basic goals, I mean, Google is always your friend, but we actually have a blog that we're just releasing on goal setting. There's different types of goals. So we talk about smart goals versus KPIs versus Roxbury US, like all these different concepts, right? Um, but really kind of at a high level, um, reducing uh, costs, right, is an example. Um, reducing, you know, improve efficiency is another way to say that, right? Reduce costs, um, uh, improve um, uh, efficiency, right? And I'm in this case, I'm just showing you a demo. So I'm just going to do this here. Um, is a single department really focused on this? Not so much. It really applies to all departments. Um, but if I wanted to have a subset of departments, so for example, a lot of the like increased website traffic, I would most likely say that that goal is really focused on marketing um, more than anything, but definitely biz dev probably as well. So anyways, I'm adding a new goal. What does that mean? That means that when I'm going to go ahead and compare and things like that, I'm going to have the opportunity to compare against some of those new goals and things like that, all right? Um, from a scenario planning standpoint, I can, again, look at those different goals and different um, scenarios and see how that would impact my prioritization of my projects. And let's say, like, you have a default scenario and your current scenario but this one is really the one that you want to focus on instead, you can actually here set this as the default scenario. And when you set that as the default scenario, what that does is it actually updates it so that if I was just a team member and I come here, right, the scenario, the rankings that I see would be based on that new scenario, if that makes sense. So the default scenario is kind of this leadership, steer co, executive plan where they're saying, okay, we know we have all of these goals, but this is how we're currently rating them. And then we're showing the team based on this, right, what those are. Now, one of the things that I like to do as a, um, and this is more of like an admin functionality, but if you think about it, um, when you initially submit something, it's an idea, I like to reduce the barriers to entry to get cool ideas out there. But I also don't want a lot of duplicate ideas. So the way that Shreline has managed this is we actually have allowed you to kind of create the different stages that an idea would go through. So it starts out as an idea. And in the idea, you might only have a couple of different fields, right? So it's like you want very basic information. So basically, like, what's the title? What's the name of the idea? What's the description? Um, and maybe we say, like, how complex is it? And, you know, what departments should focus on this idea, right? Um, I can add additional fields here if I want to. But I'm just kind of saying, you know what, this idea phase is like super easy, not a lot of fields. I don't want to have to have them do a huge business case. I just want them to be able to get their idea out there, right? But then after they get um, a couple of votes in on the comparisons and things like that, maybe I want to be able to promote that idea to be an opportunity. And once it becomes an opportunity, there's more information that I would want them to fill out. Kind of like a business case. Oftentimes organizations like have some sort of like presentation business case and a land, um, an analyst will go ahead and put additional information in. So um, InstraLine, you can kind of set up what those different uh, phases, stages are. Um, and you can decide also, right, from a user perspective on, you know, which ones you want them to weigh in on. Um, so there's a couple of things here I just want to mention. So one of the new pieces of functionality we just rolled out was um, the ability to do what's called a measurement field. Um, so I'll just look at this really quickly for you guys. So a measurement field is something 
that you can add a scale in or numeric. This is going to be important because these are actually filters that you can do in your scenario. So from a scenario planning standpoint, you're going to be able to say, you know what, my budget's $100,000. So I'm not looking at any projects that are over 50000 And I want to know based on my scenario, what those projects would that would be fitting in my 100. Or, hey, I don't want to look at any of the high complexity projects. I only want to look at the ones. But I can add an actual field here, right? So it's like, hmm, maybe I want to add a field that is about, you know, um, let's see here, uh, return on investment, ROI, um, realization. Um, and I can't spell, I'm sorry, now, right? It's like, how long until this project becomes profitable, right? And for that one, I might want to say number. And on the low end, it'll be like maybe one month, right? One month. And on the high end, it'll be 12 months, okay? Or 24 or 36 or something like that, right? Um, so let's just do 24 months, right? Um, or maybe zero, I guess. Technically, we could start with zero, right? Um, so anyways, I'm going to go ahead and save that. And so now, if I want to go ahead and add that to my stage, I can say ROI realization. I wouldn't know that necessarily in the idea phase. So I'm going to add that into my opportunity phase, right? And I'm going to go ahead and see that now show up here. And I can just drag and drop this here. Um, and I can say, you know what, it's going to take between zero um, and 24 months. And I could put in months here to make it a little more obvious, right? So anywho, these fields are the stage. The other piece I just want to mention is you do have some additional capabilities on a user management side of things. So I can say, I can look at a specific user. I can see when they last, you know, when they were created, when they last logged in. You can see this concept of user weight. So it is possible to go ahead and edit this user, right? And say, you know what, their weight in terms of their voting is actually like, you know, five, right? It's a higher. You can see, hey, how many ideas did they submit and what ratings have they done? Like what it, what's going on with them? And I can even um, add a manager in for that person as well. So there's some information that you can do as a user basis. Um, you can also import some other information. And then let me just move my over here. We have the ability to integrate. Right now we're integrating using Zapier, but we are releasing um, a Microsoft integration as well. Um, we're a Microsoft partner at Echo Consulting. So we're trying to push that through and we've um, been using it with um, some Power BI stuff as well um, for some of our senior leadership teams. So anyways, I have the ability to filter, add users, change some of their weighting. And what's cool is I can change weighting like in general, but I can also do it at a scenario basis. So when I'm doing my scenarios, I can actually say, hey, for this person, I'm going to edit this, right? I'm going to actually add a filter, right? And in this case, it looks like I already added a filter. Um, so I can edit the filter that already exists. I'm excluding R&D <laughs> and legal affairs. Sorry, guys. Um, <clears throat> I'm excluding um, admin votes. Let me get rid of that one. And I'm including some additional people that are voting, and I'm giving them additional weight. So maybe you have particular um, subject matter experts that you know that like are really focused on this and you want to weight their votes heavier than other team members. Um, so anyways, that's where that custom weighting comes in. So you have the ability to kind of adjust how goals are weighted. You have the ability to adjust how departments are weighted. You have the ability to um, adjust individual users. So like, let's just do an example here. If I did include instead, right? Um, I just say like, I'm gonna include here. Um, I also have the ability to do custom weights for, um, let's say I wanted to do leaders. And for this scenario, I want to say, you know what, for all leaders, I'm going to give them a bump. They were a five and now they're an eight. Um, so I'm, I'm able to adjust for a scenario. So like some of our teams would say, you know what, hey, if I look at just how team members vote versus how leaders vote, 
how would that change what the priorities would be and why are there differences? So I use it as an analysis um, mechanism to kind of see how people are um, interacting with these different projects and goals and things like that. The last thing I want to mention, because this has been something that a lot of um, our clients have asked us about, is yes, you have the ability to override a rank, and yes, you have the ability to promote something very easily from an idea to an opportunity to a project, or whatever your stages are. So for in this example, you can kind of see it's yellow. I'm logged in as an admin, so that's why it's showing up as yellow. But if I was logged in as a team member, it wouldn't be colored differently. Um, but you can see here that I've, um, I'm just going to edit it really quickly and you can edit the item, which means you can put additional information into the item, right? And you can also edit the rank. And in here you can see the default rank would be zero, but the assigned rank is one. Um, so in this case, I could adjust this to be, you know what, the assigned rank is four, or I could go back to the default rank. Um, I can also do something called promote. So if something um, was an idea and I wanted to make it into an opportunity, I can just come here and mark it. In this case, it's already a project. So if I wanted to like move it back to an opportunity as in, hey, whatever my process is internally, like we're not focusing on op projects right now, I could do it this way as well. So there's a lot of different functionality, but the core concepts are, right, that that idea management, so I can add an idea, I can rank an idea, I can compare different ideas and see how they impact the strategic goals. That's my kind of main hat as a team member. As a leader, I can create different scenarios and compare them and see how priorities would change and set priorities for my team based on different goals. And then as an admin, I can really create that possibly that flow of, hey, something becomes an idea and then it moves into an opportunity. So maybe you have Steerco meetings, maybe you need to make adjustments. You're kind of pushing out that information. Also, as an admin, you can import information about users. You can set different settings like notifications and all that jazz. And you can integrate with a work management system. So right now we use Zapier with um, Smartsheet as an example. So it's like this is our prioritization um, mechanism. And then we push that into Smartsheet, which becomes our work management, project management, task management um, uh, system of record. So. Again, coming back, my name is Molly Yannis, and I am the founder of Straline, a strategic alignment um, software as a service. It is available through general availability now. So if you're interested in Straline, please reach out. Um, we are implementing this now for teams. We're really seeing a big push on this heading into strategic planning season and annual planning season. A lot of HR teams, a lot of finance teams, they have to come up with budgets. They have to come up with all their ideas. How do they wrangle all of this? This is a huge opportunity. We've seen some great use cases from some of our nonprofit partners that are really looking to put their mission front and center, but they have so many different ideas and they have limited dollars. So how do they get collect this input? And then most recently, when I was at a conference for women-owned businesses, um, I was talking with a lot of ESG teams, a lot of supplier diversity teams, similar situation, which is they have these goals, they have this reporting and tracking that they need to do on their impact, but they also have all these different ideas and they are, they're advocates, right? They want to provide the biggest impact for their organization and for their world and their community. But it's hard to know, right, how, how, which project is the highest priority, what to put your limited dollars to. Sureline can provide that strategic alignment, that goal tracking, the ability to collect ideas, to see how ideas evolve over time, to see how priorities change and shift and adjust, but doing it in a transparent way, a communicative way, and really getting the buy-in from your team, getting the information, the special sauce that they know about what these different initiatives might impact your goals. Um, so again, visibility, transparency, efficiency, increased collaboration, and just better strategic alignment so that you can really have the biggest impact. One of our big things is like you are making an impact. How do you um, make the best impact, provide the best value that you can um, for your stakeholders? So again, Molly Yannis, Straline and Echo Consulting, thank you for joining me for this brief video. And um, I hope to hear from you and about your strategic planning um, cycle and alignment, how you keep your team uh, focused on the end goals. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.